Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to High Media Headlines. We're going to get into your top stories of the day. First, please uh, do a solid and do all the things down below. I appreciate you immensely, and let's get into it. Ubisoft fulfills dark prophecy by releasing an NFT game. It's been a, it's been a while. Over the past few months, the developer has met with quite a few mishaps, most notably being the underwhelming reception of Star Wars Outlaws. The game underperformed enough to trigger an internal investigation as to why, with the with the uh, uh, delay of Assassin's Creed Shadows and it eventually coming on the horizon. Uh, Champions Tactics, Grimoire Chronicles, is not the thing they needed that was fresh so people would forget. It is the latest in triple A Ubisoft games, although you never know it from the lack of fan leading up to its release. It was dumped onto the market, and at glance it seems unoriginal agreed, and egregious, but not egregious players engaged in turn-based tactical battles. Unfortunately, every miniature in the game is an NFT, with some fetching prices in the tens of thousands of dollars on the game's blockchain market. Oh my god. Why are they still trying to do NFTs? Nobody gives a fuck about those. Sony closes Concord Game Studio and permanently shuts the game down. They've closed Firewalk Studios, a studio beside its PlayStation Conquer game, which was took offline last month that we covered extensively here on the channel. Firewalk Studios will close alongside Neon Koi, a mobile game studio. The shutdowns will affect around 210 jobs. Uh, we have spent considerable time in the past few months exploring all our options herman hulse ceo of playstation business group said after much thought we've determined the best path forward is to permanently sunset the game and close the studio hulse said conquer didn't hit sony's targets and no no fucking kidding and that playstation uh, maker will take lessons learned from conquer and continue to advance our live service capabilities to deliver future growth in this area or i don't know make actually fun games instead of live service slot but that's just me Continuing our coverage with the Nightingale uh, flop, who oh, unfortunately, I, it looks interesting. It's a Victorian multi-dimensional crafting adventure game, which looks cool. Uh, Nightingale dev Inflection Games lays off even more staff as the UK office has shut down. Inflection's previously indicated the studio's office was being closed, and CEO Aaron Flynn said the Canada team will also undergo restructuring. In a statement, Flynn's explained that early access release of its debut game has not been a commercial success. Along with letting go of some remarkable team members, Flynn said Inflection's Canada-based team will undergo the restructuring. The past few weeks have been challenging. Like many other studios over the past few years, we've been hit by the stark realities of the industry. Our priorities support each member of the team affected by the reductions as they search for new opportunities. Prior to Nightingale's launch, Inflection was acquired by Tencent, and the studio had put all its attention into the survival fantasy game, including enabling it to be played offline at some point in the game's lifetime. Flynn stated more information on the game's updates will be provided soon. In other news, Steam now requires devs to tell players they're playing games with kernel-level anti-cheat tools. Valve is requiring new devs to fill out an anti-cheat disclaimer and retroactively contacting devs behind existing games to do the same. In absolute simplest term, a kernel-level driver is part of a game's software that connects directly to your PC to scan for certain data and information that might indicate you've been cheating, basically, and I mean, very basically. It is a standalone client that boots up every time you start your PC and operates at the deepest level of your operation, uh, operating system's authorization, authorization to scan your actual system for cheating software instead of just a game server. It is a super invasive piece of technology, and there is no reason for it to exist. Otherwise, you know, for you know companies to say that they're doing everything they can to get rid of cheating, it's a fairly grotesque uh, type of software and. Um, especially after the CrowdStrike mishap earlier this year, it's kind of going to go the way of the Dodo sooner rather than later. Assassin's Creed Shadow was is apparently delay was necessary to change the narrative of Ubisoft's inconsistency in quality. We only have one shot, says uh, Assassin's Creed boss Mark Alexis Cote, has, and he's ta uh, talking about the recent shock decision to delay the launch of it until February 2025. The move means Shadow will miss the Assassin's Creed typical pre-Christmas sales window and comes amidst much scrutiny of Ubisoft's ongoing fortunes. Speaking at a BAFTA event attended by Eurogamer in London last night, Cote reflected on the reasons for the delay and the critical importance of the game to Ubisoft at a pivotal moment for the company and the brand, mainly because they've had a completely dog shit year as it relates to funding, 
branding, uh, community standing, tons of game flops, unpopular, you know, things, games that should have been excellent and well loved that weren't. They they are kind of floundering at the moment. In the TCG realm, Life Game decks will be will finally get an enormous boost with Magic the Gathering or MTG Foundations. The Life Game strategy always seemed to remain beloved within the MTG player base at large. No matter what the standard environment, there's a decent chance to play against the Life Game deck at least a few times while grinding the ladder on Arena. Unfortunately, more often than not, the strategies fall short of being a top-tier competitive archetype. Cards like Anjadi's Pride Mate, while fun, aren't the most powerful nowadays, and in order for a light game deck to thrive, there needs to be a ton of support, and well, there it seems that the new archetypes will soon have a real opportunity to thrive thanks to the MTG Foundations. There are already some decent tools in standard, but MTG Foundations may have what it takes to elevate the archetypes to the next level, including things like Alanda Saint of Dusk, the legendary creature vampire knight with life link, hexproof from instance, as long as your life total is greater than your starting life total, Alanda gets a, pl a plus one plus one in has menace. She has an additional five plus five plus as long as you're like at least ten greater than your starting life total. Fingersoft lays off 14 staff after a substantial decline in ad revenue. With this year's substantial decline in ad revenue, adjustments to our cost structure begin become essential to serve the people behind uh few different games, Hill, Hill Climb Racing being one of them. In a statement to PocketGamer.biz, the CEO Jacko Kamoja, I butchered that name i'm so sorry i'm just gonna call him jacko so the redundancies were spread across the company and not tied to a specific project he blamed this year's substantial decline in ad revenue for the redundancies he had a decision was made to secure the company's sorry i got distracted by something was made to secure the company's long-term success according to social media posts impacted roles included community aso marketing development and others including job losses as well uh the, even though the company has surpassed 2 billion installs across all platforms. Dragon Age Veilguard is not going to be getting any DLCs, as Bioware is wholly focused on making Mass Effect 5, so at least that is confirmed. That's what Rolling Stone reports as part of an interview with creative director John Elper. The reason is fairly straightforward. They aren't a large team, and they are currently focused on making the next Mass Effect game, which is colossal. Uh, executive producer Mike Gamble recently confirmed we'll stick to the photorealistic art style and mature tone. Of course, this interview was conducted when the game had only just released. If Veilguard turns out to surpass EA sales estimates, there's a chance those plans might change. Still, from a narrative standpoint, Veilguard does close up fairly nicely, unlike Inquisition, which would very much needed the DLCs to bring the story to a proper conclusion. In Rolling Stone's interview, John Alper went into went into the feedback Biowar absorbed from its fans to make Dragon Age Veilguard a battle game for Mass Effect Andromeda, and the studio learned that, that polish wasn't enough and that open world design was lacking. Red Dead Redemption's surprise new release is flooded with uh, perfect reviews is a loaded term, but very, very good. The game is 15 years old, but due to a PC port and leveraging the nicer hardware, especially that has existed over the last 15 years, um, it is sitting at a very positive score on Steam with, with a 92% rating as of 11-2-2024. With two with two thousand plus reviews ending a positive, it, right now it is the two hundred and ninth game with the most active players on Steam. It might not sound that impressive on paper, but when you consider the fact that a fourteen year old game is beating out the likes of Life is Strange Double Exposure dropped on the same day, and is only one spot below Starfield, which was probably one of the most hyped games of twenty twenty three, and us Bethesda game uh, fanboys are simps, it is a lot more impressive than it sounds. Hey. Thanks for watching. If you want to you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hibmedia.gg/discord. Discord links there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hibmedia.gg/10. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boot to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.